about Raw. My apologies to mommy. Mommy knows everything. So I, I missed her. <laughs> All right. So, happy birthday, Raw. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. I'm gonna I'm gonna um, talk a little different from everybody else. Everybody's praising Raw and saying all the nice stuff. I'm not gonna say anything bad, but I'm gonna expose something. Not that I should not expose. I'm gonna be careful. But I wrote down a few things that I'm not gonna be very long. One is about Raw smiling. Raw is always, always smiling. He was smiling from he was a little tiny top. It's as if he knew something that none of us knew. It's like the Holy Spirit had told him something. I don't know what. In fact, he smiled so much it used to irritate me sometimes. You know, Raul probably wondered, I think when we were about 13, one day we were walking in Mona. And I just hit him in the head. He probably wondered, why in the world my brother hit him in the head? He was just smiling too much for me. <laughs> Just smiling, smiling. It really, it really got to me. Once, sometimes when we were walking together, he smiled, and the girls used to love his curly hair, right? I would be interested in this girl, and Raw would be beside me, and they wouldn't pay me any attention. They'd be looking at my younger brother. He's one year younger, right? Is that true, mommy? Yeah. And um, they'll be looking at Raw all the time, and I, that, that used to get to me, and he would just be smiling, not saying a word. You know, but um, there are some there are some things that I really, really want to share that some people may not know about his younger age, younger years. Um, well, this extended right into his older years, but Raul did not like to hurt anybody. He was always concerned about others, um, especially me, because I remember when we used to swim, Raul was much better than me in backstroke and but he he was getting better than me in crawl which was my favorite stroke and he knew that I would be absolutely destroyed if he beat me in, in, in crawl so you know what he did he stopped racing in crawl I don't ever re remember those days so he just focused on his backstroke thought I didn't know why but I knew he just didn't want to embarrass me you know that's the type of person he was I remember another time, well, this is a story I'm sure you gotta remember. I used to be really a bully to Raul, kind of, not a bad way, you know, like a brother, little brother following him around, push him off, hey, why are you following him, that kind of stuff. So sometimes I get in a big fight with him and he would just back down and you know, let, let me have my way. But one day in Calabar, Mom was talking about Calabar. I remember I hit Raul. I don't remember what it was. Raul hit me back, right? And I hit him, and we started one big fight. So Daddy came and said, Daddy, gonna stop this fight. Oh, this boy handling me. Daddy did not stop the fight. <laughs> Daddy made that boy beat the life out of me, right? I remember <laughs> all the tears and all of that. Crash all cheered all over the place. Needless to say, that was the last time I ever hit that boy. <laughs> you know? So, so there was a real tough side. To it. And some, of, some of us believe it's just, just the nice, calm side. He has a tough side. They used, to call, they used to call Raul Pepper because he used to play defense. And when he tackled you, you better get out of the way. He came really, really hard for a short time. Then he stopped. And why did Raul stop? Because he could have gotten very, very good in soccer. Unlike me, I continued, I continued. Didn't really get that very good. But he stopped because he had his priorities right from the very beginning. I noticed that about him. I remember the nights, the mornings when I'd wake up early in the morning, we shared a bedroom. His bed on one side, mine on the other. I'd wake up early in the morning and see the light on. And Raul was there in the corner reading his Bible. So I just boy don't go to bed, you know? He would be, I mean, that would, every, almost every morning he would be up early. He is disciplined. He knew what he wanted from the very beginning. And he did it with his academics too, you know, his biology especially. You know, I don't know how many of you knew that. I think, I think Raul was one of the best in biology in the whole, um, 
mm-hmm. England, all of that. When who, who took um, O levels? Whoever took O levels, Raul got one of the highest grades in the whole group. You know, he was he was pretty brilliant in his own right. But he was focused. He knew what he wanted to study. He even told me one day he saw me reading my Bible, and he said, "Okay, Alfred, remember." He taught me how to study the Bible. He said, um, "Alfred." Look, you, you use a concordance. I didn't even know what they call them, concordance, right? So he introduced me to the concordance and said, hey, when you read this, check it out here, check, check up back up. I've been doing it ever since, you know? I teach Bible studies right now, and that, 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 that's what I do. And I learned a lot from what Raul taught me back in the day. But he always had his priorities. He had good habits, right? Um, and there was, but there was a time, there was a time when I didn't want to be known as Raw's brother. Everywhere I went, oh, you're Raw's brother? And I said, oh my God, here we go again, right? Yeah. I'm walking through campus. I was walking through Yui campus once, and this guy, who remember Figaro? This guy, I don't remember his first name, political guy, um, I think he was a communist, you know? Mark. Yes. Mark. Mark. Mark Figaro. Yeah, yes. So he stopped me on campus and started to talk to me, very friendly like. And I said, oh, this guy know about me. This guy knows me, you know? <laughs> and I was feeling good. And so after the conversation, now he said, by the way, just tell Raul hello, okay? That year, the, 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 the Christian group on campus, led by Raul, took over the whole guild. And I think that 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 affected Figaro. You remember those times? The whole guild, I think unanimously, unanimously, everybody was a Christian on that guild. I mean, those were fantastic times. And I think Raul was really led by spirit in those times, you know. But um, I could say a lot more. I'm going to cut it short because there are other people. But even though there were times I did not want to be known as, as Raul's brother, after I started to mature a little bit, believe it or not, I, I um, realized that it was actually a privilege to be known as Raw's brother. You know, so much so that when I came here to the States and they asked when I was doing my first essay, um, I think it was English 101, and they said, write about your hero. You know, a couple of other Jamaicans talking about Bob Marley, Michael Mann. I wrote Raul Tyson, and that's that 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 was my first essay ever in college. You know who my hero was, you know, and I, I just want to say that I really feel blessed to be Raul's brother, you know, and I appreciate his smile now. You know, even when I when I heard that Raul got shot and I came home, right, and Raul was recovering. Guess what I saw? A smile. <laughs> Raul was smiling there. You know, so I just, I really appreciate it. You know, bless you all. And one last thing, Raul does have faults, believe it or not. There is no complete Raul without Esther. And I really, really see that over the years. Esther has been his support in many, many, many ways. You know, so he's a complete man, God has given him Esther. So I give thanks for Esther too. All right, guys, thank you.